Coming up on The Local Traveler, we roll up our sleeves and get crafty. We learn more about the importance of artisan education in the beautiful mountains of eastern Kentucky. We also discover a variety of arts and, yours truly, may even get to play with fire. So don't miss this episode of Blacksmith and Luthery Fun. It's all coming up on The Local Traveler. Heinemann sits about 20 miles east of Hazard and was founded in 1884. This Knott County city has long been known for bettering the lives of Appalachian residents, with many services in the area that do just that. It's home to the Heinemann Settlement School, which was the first rural settlement school in America established in 1902. It's also home to the Kentucky School of Craft, a professional school dedicated to craft education and community development that's operated by Hazard Community and Technical College. However, even more craft education opportunities exist just down the street at the Appalachian Artisan Center. Today, we're gonna to see the vital role these places play in preserving and promoting our cultural heritage through the arts. The Appalachian Artisan Center is a nonprofit organization dedicated to building and strengthening artistic traditions through education, business development, and support services. In addition to nurturing artists, they also connect with the community through exhibits and workshops. One of the current exhibits on display features beautiful works in acrylic on canvas, watercolor, and graphite by artist Bill Cottle. They also have a permanent exhibit called the Museum of the Mountain Dulcimer, which honors the legendary work of Jean Ritchie, Uncle Ed Thomas, Jethro Ambergy, and Homer Ledford. However, if you're looking for something a little more interactive, then one of their blacksmith workshops might just be up your alley. I'm here talking today with Dan Estep, and he is the master blacksmith at the Appalachian Artisan Center. Thanks for having us out today to see what you do. Thanks for coming, glad to have you. Well, I'm excited to learn a little bit more about this program. I understand you have some kind of pre-designed workshops that people can take. Yeah, this is a program we started last fall and went for a couple of months. We taught several workshops, like you can come and make a hatchet, a knife, or keychains, hooks, basically whatever you want to. I can design it for you, or you can just come in and say, Dan, I want to make a tripod to cook on, and we'll figure it out for you. <laughs> well, that's true. So there's pre-design, but then there's also custom workshops. Yeah, exactly. We don't limit ourselves to any one thing. Today, we may be making a knife. Tomorrow, we might be making a fireplace poker, a shovel, or just anything out of metal that we can think of or someone else does. Now, how did you get into this? How did you uh, become fascinated with blacksmithing? Well, a long time ago, I got in trouble with my father when I was this little kid. I didn't have blacksmith tools, but he had a workshop, and you know, I was always in, into knives and guns and things that other young boys are. So, being in trouble and grounded for a while, working in the shop was all <laughs> I could do because I couldn't go anywhere. So I started making some things and they turned out fairly okay and people liked them and it kind of encouraged me. And then about 1980, I was working in the coal industry, got laid off. So I kind of picked it up again and that's just how it came about. Well, and that's actually really relevant for people today because there's a lot of layoffs right now in the coal industry. Absolutely. So maybe it is a good time to start thinking about a craft or something that you can kind of develop well, the craft is a good thing, even if you don't make a living at it. You can mm -hmm. It allows you to be a little more self-sufficient. Iron is like clay if you heat it. You know, you can make anything you want. Now, some blacksmiths are knife makers, some are harness, you know, do the horse and stuff like that. But basically anything that's made of iron, you can find a way to do it here. In fact, a hundred years ago, this was a craft that was common to everyone. Every farmer could shoe his own horses. He could, you know, make a butcher knife, make a horseshoe, or make, fix his plow. You know, but it kind of, with automation, died out. I know we're gonna be making something today. What will you show me? I think we'll make a leaf key ring and maybe a hook if we have time. These are two projects I like to introduce people to because they cover almost every aspect of foraging. Good. Well, I'm excited to get started and maybe look at some of the pieces you've created. Now what I'm going to do is spread this 
a little and thin it out some. You hit opposite of what I do. Dan Estep knows firsthand just how beneficial a craft education can be. After a layoff at a coal washing plant several years ago, he was in need of a fresh start. Although Dan had worked in metal previously, he did not have experience with taking his art and turning it into a business. Now Dan works in Bolin Studios crafting one-of-a-kind works of metal art and sells his pieces here at the Appalachian Artisan Center. Good tap. Right, right there. here, right? Right there, yep. Oh gosh, there you go. All right. Okay, good slope. Yeah, that one I want right there. And just hold it right there. Not only does the Appalachian Artisan Center specialize in blacksmith crafts, they also have an impressive Luthery studio, and we get to check it out after the break. Today, we're in Eastern Kentucky visiting the city of Hindman. We're learning more about many of the craft development programs offered here. This community is full of Appalachian culture and enriching educational opportunities. Our first stop has been at the Appalachian Artisan Center, where we took a workshop with master blacksmith Dan Estep. Next, we're heading to the Luthery Studio to talk with the master artist in residence, Doug Nasalroad. I'm here today talking with Doug Nasalroad, and he is the master luthier here at the Appalachian Artisan Center. That's right. Thanks for talking with us today. No, well, thanks for coming down. We're excited to be here. You all, obviously, this is where all the stringed music magic happens. Yeah, a lot of it. Boy, there's just musical instruments getting made around here all the time. There are, and you have a large variety. Can you tell me some of the different ones you make? Sure. Uh, me and my guys, we make guitars, dulcimers, of course, because we have, at the core of things is uh, the dulcimer project. We make mandolins, ukuleles, canjos, banjos, <laughs> even the occasional kazoo. Well, that's great, and you also offer workshops so that other people can learn how to make this. Yeah, pretty much everything you can make with, with a string, we can offer you in the form of a workshop where we train you start to finish and uh, even provide the materials. You're doing that for people that come in, just the public, but you're also partnering with some schools as well. Yeah, we've got a, a big project going right now with the Kentucky School of Craft. Uh, it's kind of unprecedented. Uh, it's very large in its scale. We're, we're making mandolins built on the old Gibson Army Navy pattern that they made during World War I. It's a real simple little mandolin, but it's one that performs real well. And uh, you know they're collectible, you know, if you find an old one out there somewhere. But we're making new ones with, with a little, little enhancement, a little tweak here and there. Well, why do you think it's important to be partnering with younger generations and teaching them this style of craft? Well, for one thing, it's, a, it's important to uh, encourage young people to work with their hands, period. Uh, because it's uh, getting to be, a, in this information age, it's getting to be kind of a, a lost art that people are actually capable of doing things manually. Uh, but also, it's, it's where these, especially here, this is, this is where uh, these people come from, you know, they come from people who build their own instruments and uh, make their own music, you know, make their own their own recreation, their own fun. It's, it's the best kind. Is it rewarding for you to see these younger um, kids and, and just this younger generation being able to to learn something that you're such a, an expert at? It is. It's exciting to, to see this little magical thing happen when someone takes this chunk of wood and they, they stick with the process until you know they get to that moment where the music starts to come out of it. It is, it's, it's magical and to see someone experience that for the first time, it really is exciting. Yeah, I guess that's really kind of reaping your harvest. You really get to see that hard work put to use. Well, I think for the instrument maker, uh, whether you're doing it directly or indirectly, you know, that's really the payoff right there. 
you, you want to get paid for your work, you want to you want to get the paycheck, but what you're really working toward is is that moment where you hear that music come out. You know, what 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 have we done here? What's this going to be like? Yeah. And uh, it's never it's never a disappointment with students ever. Well, and part of what you're doing too there is you're also teaching them how to make it a business, right? Isn't that something the School of Craft is doing? Absolutely. You've got to learn the craft, but then you have to learn the business side of it too, right? To make a living. At, well, in these times, you know, in Appalachia, it's really needful that people think of new ways to generate income. Mm -hmm. uh, coal is just not really there like it used to be, and people are realizing that, you know, they're, they're not going to be able to go back to it. So anything that's, that brings more money to, to the individual or the region uh, is something that we need to pursue. Well, on our way, I know we're going to head over to the school and kind of oh, see you in yeah. action. What things should we be looking for? What can we expect? Well, there's, there's going to be a lot of people in there, uh, a couple of dozen people at once probably building these instruments. And uh, maybe we might even persuade them to try out an instrument while we're over there. The Hazard Community and Technical College's Kentucky School of Craft aspires to become a national and international model for craft education. The curriculum is innovative and produces skilled artisans that are knowledgeable in this region's rich traditions. It's equipped with state-of-the-art woodworking and metals facilities, and students have the opportunity to learn the fields of sculpture, ceramics, and digital photography. Today, they get a special visit from Master Luthier, Doug Nasal Road, to get personal guidance and instruction in building their prefabricated mandolin kits. The Kentucky School of Craft is really important for this community. Uh, it provides not only our college students with access to the fine arts, but we also find ways to really engage community members, uh, local high schools, and just a variety of people that are really interested in different creative processes. I'm 72. I am retired. It is a marvelous opportunity. I have always been interested in arts. I have made many jewelry pieces and I sell them at the Appalachian Artisan Center here in town. I really feel that it's a great benefit for the community because this is, you know, state-of-the-art technology that they have in this school and to be a if, where we're located in the far southeastern corner of Kentucky, to have this kind of equipment that I can come in and use and work on my own projects, along with help the students here. It's, it's a great benefit for the community and, you know, the state as a whole. Here in Hyman, we have the Appalachian Artisan Center, the Hyman Settlement School, as well as the Kentucky School of Craft. Uh, so we're three organizations that share very similar goals and values, and many of them are linked the idea of keeping traditions alive, teaching people new skills, and also creating economic opportunities uh, for the community. And we really see that as one of our biggest strengths uh, that we're all working together. I will say that I would be tempted to move away if the School of Craft was not here, because I'd go someplace else searching for what we have available to us here. So I better stay forever. An education for younger generations in the business of arts and crafts is a key part of the area's strategy to boost the local economy. And developing a new thriving artist-based community in Eastern Kentucky will do just that. While visiting the Kentucky School of Craft, we met student Johnny Morgan, who's also enrolled in the Kentucky School of Bluegrass and Traditional Music. He agreed to treat us to a little mandolin playing.
By utilizing the rich cultural heritage of the area, this eastern Kentucky town really knows how to go local. Make sure and add Hindman to your local traveler's list.